This video is sponsored by Square Enix. Hey you guys, today I'm bringing you a review on the combat for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I've been playing it for the past few days, and spoiler warning, it is amazing. If you've seen my content before, you know I love to go in depth with mechanics and slow everything down to clearly show each attack. For this video though, I want to be as broad and general as possible, so I'll go over the basics and save the in-depth breakdowns for later videos. So first I will do a quick run through of how everything works before giving my thoughts and opinions on the combat. This game uses a real-time strategy type of combat, meaning both you and the enemy can pull off normal attacks without waiting for your turn. What you do have to wait for though is your battle commands. Your battle commands are anything you use your command menu for, so abilities, spells, items, summons, and limit breaks. These all take ATB gauge charges. This is the blue bars in the bottom corner of your screen. This will slowly rise during battle, but you can build it up faster by attacking or guarding against attacks. If an enemy is staggered, you can also use each character's unique ability to greatly increase your ATB bars. Most of the enemies you fight can be staggered, which leaves them defenseless and they take more damage. Pressure will appear under the stagger gauge when knocked off balance. Attacking weaknesses or dealing a certain amount of damage will cause them to go off balance. When they are off balance, their stagger gauge will increase more quickly. Anyways, let's take a second to look at your abilities and spells. Abilities are special attacks that are different for each character. Each character has one ability that they start with, and the rest of your abilities can come from the weapon you are holding. Each weapon has a special ability associated with it, and after maxing out your proficiency, your character will keep that ability even after changing weapons. So for example, Triple Slash is an ability Cloud can use when he is using the Iron Blade. If you change weapons, you will lose access to it. Using Triple Slash though will increase your proficiency, and after maxing it, you can switch to say your Buster Sword, but still have access to Triple Slash. Spells come from magic materia set in your weapons or armor. You can find some of this materia while exploring, through story progression, or from various stores. There are three main types of spells in this game. Offensive, Defensive, and Curative spells. Offensive spells are your elemental attacks like Fire, Blizzard, or Thunder. Your defensive spells are your buffs and debuffs, so things like Barrier that protects you against physical attacks, or Slow that slows down your enemy's ATB gauge charges. Curative spells are, like the name suggests, HP healing or status ailment healing spells. The materia that you equip for these can improve as you gain ability points in battle. This will upgrade your various materia after getting enough points. You can see how that materia will improve on the materia and equipment screen by this list of stars. This will show the entire upgrade process and how your materia will improve. During battle you will still have access though to all the levels of magic and can cycle through them with the d-pad. I really like how your spells are not just overwritten with the newer spells, and you can choose what you want to use since while the higher tier spells are better, they cost more, so sometimes it is better to use a lower tier spell to save MP. Anyways, all of the magic materia is green, but there are also command materia which are yellow. This gives you special abilities like Assess, which lets you analyze the enemy and see all their stats, weaknesses, and abilities. You also have Support materia which is blue, and aid the materia they are linked to. This requires linked materia slots in your armor or weapons. An example of this materia is Elemental, which will give your weapon the elemental damage it is linked with. So if you have a lightning materia linked with an elemental materia, you will deal lightning damage with all of your attacks. Complete materia is pinkish purple and are stat boosters, so you can have HP up or luck up materia to increase those stats. Lastly, there are your summon materia which are red. These have their own special spot on your weapon materia slots. Summons can only be used in specific battles, and a bar will start to charge up in the corner to let you know it is available. These summons will auto attack the enemy and you can use your ATB bars to give special commands to them. When the summon bar depletes, they will end with their ultimate attack before disappearing. The last piece of combat is your limit breaks. These require a full limit bar which you can charge when you take damage or stagger enemies. All of the limit breaks are unique to each character. Now let's look at the characters you can play as. In the remake, you gain control of four characters, Cloud, Barret, Tifa, and Aerith. Each character has a unique ability that you can use with Triangle. You can also easily switch between characters with a D-pad. This can be helpful when your character is bound and unable to move. You can take control of another character and attack the enemy to free yourself. You can also issue commands to your party members with the L2 and R2 buttons. Cloud is your general well-rounded character. He is a close range attacker who has a good balance between defense and offense. You can attack with Square, though holding it will unleash a powerful AoE attack. Cloud's unique ability is Mode Change. You have access to two modes, Operator Mode and Punisher Mode. Operator Mode is your normal mode and is focused on a balance between offense and defense. You can guard against attacks, dodge, and move pretty quickly in this mode. Punisher Mode is more focused on dishing out powerful attacks and sacrifices your speed for it. You move more slowly in this form and can't guard against projectiles. Guarding while in this mode will let you counterattack any incoming melee attacks though. If you dodge while in Punisher Mode, you will revert back to Operator Mode. The next character is Barret. 
He is your long range attacker. Holding down square will let you shoot a barrage of shots, ending with one strong shot. Sometimes enemies will be too high for Cloud to reach, so Barret comes in handy during these situations. His unique ability is Overcharge. This is a strong attack that will also fill your ATB gauge by quite a bit. After using this, you will have a cooldown period, though pressing triangle will charge it up faster. A cool little mechanic is if you charge at the end of a combo, you will spend less time in the charge animation. Later on, you can get a melee weapon for Barret, which changes his normal attack and unique ability. I don't have footage of this though because I haven't been able to get far enough in the game to actually see what this is. I just actually happened to read this in Barrett's Strengths manual entry, so there is a melee option for Barrett, I just haven't seen it yet. Anyways, Tifa is another close range attacker, though most of her combat is focused on long combos. You can either press square to do your combo or hold square to deal a single strong attack. The unique ability actually has three levels to it. The base ability is Whirling Uppercut, though using her Unbridled Strength ability will change it. At level 2 you will have the Omni Strike ability, and at level 3 you will have the Rise and Fall ability. Tifa's base combo will increase in length with each of these levels, with level 3 having a strong finish to end the combo. Aerith is your last party member, <laughs> from what I know, uh, and is a long range attacker who focuses on both offensive and support spells. She can be a good damage dealer or a good healer or buffer depending on how you want to use her. Holding down square will have her casting a lengthy magic combo. This can actually damage multiple enemies as when you are facing a group, Aerith will cast extra magic to shoot out at surrounding enemies. Aerith's unique ability is Tempest. You can either press it once to shoot out a couple shots of magic or charge it to unleash a powerful single attack. Now for my thoughts on this combat. I love how each of the characters feels different. I'm all about quick attacks and close combat, so I gravitated towards Cloud's operator mode and Tifa's combat. For other people though, they might like close range combat, they might like long range combat, they might like just staying back and using spells. Really, Final Fantasy VII Remake's combat system is designed in a way that people can choose whatever they want to do, and I really enjoy that. I love feeling like I have all these options, all these abilities, all these spells to choose from, um, and so if I'm getting bored of the combat, then it's my own fault and I can change that. Uh, and I, I really like that combat flow and combat feeling are up to the player. So if you're not enjoying it, then try changing it up. Try using a different character, try using different uh, attack strategy. But really, you can play however you want to. Do you want to stay back and pick off enemies with magic? Equip offensive magic materia on Aerith or Barret and hang it back while the computer handles the close combat. You can be aggressive or defensive. You can set up shortcuts to your most used commands so you don't have to go through your command menu and take yourself out of the flow of combat. Conversely, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, you can pop into the command menu to slow down time and get your bearings. This game's combat is so good and it feels so fresh. I've only had a bit of time with it, but it is so much fun to find combinations of different abilities and combos. Being able to be so strategic with your entire party's commands is also really satisfying. I cannot wait to see the kinds of strategies people come up with as they play through this game. Also, the music in this game, it's not really like part of combat, <laughs> but I really just like want to say the music in this game is amazing. There's like such a strong like feeling of nostalgia while listening to it, but also like this feeling of new, fresh music to listen to. Ah, oh, it's just so good. Like so many times, like I was like tearing up because like it just struck this chord inside of me of like ah, oh, like it's nostalgic and it sounds good and I love it. Just the way the way that the music just builds and and makes combat and just like exploring just feels so incredible is ah it's amazing um so if you're playing be sure to <laughs> be sure to have the music on because you really want to hear that if there's one thing i guess that's not really like again not really combat review um but if there's one thing i would say about like playing this game is try to leave all your expectations at the door or whatever um, when you start playing it because I know I had a lot of expectations of like oh like they need to hit this part they need to tell this part like when is this part gonna happen and it, it kind of got in the way of me just really enjoying the characters because they have really fleshed these characters out a whole lot um, and I think if you're if you're focusing too much on all the story beats and, and focusing on the next part you kind of miss uh, and get pulled out of that immersion so I would say like try to get as, as immersed as possible um, really just enjoy getting to know these characters and yeah i'll stop <laughs> i'll stop rambling but anyways that is all the time i have for you guys today i hope you enjoyed it i hope this got you excited for the final fantasy 7 remake i know i'm usually more of an in-depth guy but i wanted to be more general with this review and not have an incredibly long video even glossing over all the mechanics in this game was a ton of information and i didn't even cover all the minute details and this video was still like what like 10 minutes long um Anyways, I cannot wait to pick this game apart, but it's gonna take me a bit of time to get them done. There's a bunch of like unique attacks that I wanna get into the breakdowns and not have to do a separate series. I may end up doing that, we'll see. But I'll be streaming some of my playthrough over on Twitch, so follow the link in the description below to catch me live. I have some pre-release trailer analyses of the remake, so click the card on screen to see that and see if my predictions came true or not. Subscribe or share this and I will see you in the next video. And again, 
Thank you, Square, so much for sending me this review copy, and thank you all for your support and viewership. This opportunity only came from you guys, and I'm so just deeply thankful and deeply grateful for you guys um, for sticking with me, for watching my content, for um, supporting me. Just thank you.